Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams Jr. I'm pastor here at Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion. We are located at 402 Austin Avenue in Albion, Michigan, 49224. We would love for you to come out and see our service or even visit uh, our YouTube channel, different social medias where our sermons, our Bible studies, and many services are listed for your enjoyment to help you get through the, your daily trials and tribulations. And also make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to visit our website, gbwtalmian.org. We love you and God bless you. And hopefully we see you soon. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Well, I thank God first and foremost for being here on this afternoon. And certainly, I want to thank God for being saved. Who's happy to be saved on this hey. afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. To have the precious yeah. gift of the Holy Ghost. We have something that money cannot buy. And I do have to say this real quickly. If you do not have the Holy Ghost, you have no power. Amen. You must have the gift of the Holy Ghost. So I give honor to God who is the head of my life because without him, I am nothing. I would also like to give honor to the shepherd of this wonderful house, District Amen. Elder Kevin Williams. Can we give God praise for him on this afternoon? Amen. While we're clapping, can we give God praise for First Lady Williams? Amen. Doing such a fantastic job. And I'm so thankful for them Amen. and for our friendship. And, and always coming back here, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm at Amen. home. So I'm so honored to be able to stand behind this sacred desk. I also would like to give honor from my pastor uh, from New Grace Apostolic Temple Church, Suffolk Bishop Avery Dumas. I thank God for him and for allowing me to be here on this afternoon. Amen. I would also like to give honor to my, my beautiful wife, Sister Caitlin oh, Brunson. I thank God for her and the boys. God is doing something special and I am so thankful for what God is doing. And I also would like to give honor to my, my loving, supporting mother, Evangelist Georgia Brunson. Amen. Amen. There's, there's something about having a praying mother. Praying mother. I thank God for her and for her prayers. And I honor all the saints, I get all the ministers and elders in their respective places. And I salute you in the name of Jesus Christ. But if you have your Bibles, I'm not going to be before you very long here on this afternoon. But I'd like for you to direct your attention with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 18 and verse number 37. Again, that's the book of Luke chapter number 18 and verse number 37. And God had led me this way on this morning. The book of Luke chapter number 18 and verse number 37. Luke chapter 18, verse number 37. And saints of God, when you get there, please signify by saying, I've got it. I've got it. Oh, a couple of more seconds here. Luke Chapter number 18 and verse number 37. Luke 18 and 37. And say to God, when you get there, please signify by saying, I've got it. I've got it. And these words are recorded. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, Father. We thank you for your mercy. Yes. Father God, we want to thank you for your tender love. Father God, before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for everything. You, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this very hour. Father, the fact that last night was not our last night, we want to say thank you. God, we're asking you right now, Lord, if you can have your way in this place. Father, help us to feel your touch. Help us, God, to feel your very presence, Lord. God, we're asking you right now, God, if you can allow this word to come forth with power and with an anointing. Lord, you anoint my tongue as a ready writer, rightly dividing the word of truth. God, we're asking you right now, God, if you can trouble the waters of baptism. Save someone on this afternoon, God. Deliver someone on this afternoon. Set someone free on this afternoon. And God, we're asking all these things right now in your blessed name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. And it reads, and they told him 
that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Saints of God, that leads me to the topic I'd like to speak upon this afternoon. And my topic is simply titled, The Place of Desperation. The Place of Desperation. Brothers and sisters, if we take a moment here on this afternoon and, and, and look back over our lives, we can all come to the acknowledgement here that we all have found ourselves in desperate situations. As we are living in this life, we can all be transparent here and acknowledge that life is very difficult because life is filled with sicknesses. Life is filled with trials. Life is filled with tribulations. This life that we're living in can beat us down to the point of where we feel like we're not going to make it. If we can be honest, your life can take you to a place. Life can put you in a position of where you feel like you're hopeless. It can make you feel like God has left your side. But saints of God, I want to remind somebody real quickly on this afternoon that no matter what life throws your way, no matter how dark the situation is, no matter how dark the trial is, if you are in the will of God, I want to remind you that you have a hope. I want to tell somebody here on this afternoon that you got the promise that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but he'll be with you always. If you believe that here on this afternoon, just clap your hands and give God praise and shout hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, when you look at this word hopelessness, hopelessness is a word that is in direct correlation with desperation. Desperation is a word that is defined as the state of despair. And saints of God, we're looking at desperation with the natural lens. Many in this world will suggest to us that desperation, it is an emotion or place that should be avoided. Brothers and sisters, when looking at desperation in the natural, desperation is considered to be a place of weakness. It's considered to be a place of vulnerability. It's considered to be a place of someone that's lost their way. And saints of God, if we can be honest here on this afternoon, naturally, none of us want to be desperate. But saints of God, if you look at desperation in the spiritual lens, Desperation is where God wants us to be. Because when you're desperate, there's no room for arrogance. When you're desperate, there's no room for feeling like you're all that in a bag of chips. But, but when you are truly desperate, it pushes you to get inside of the presence of God. When you're in the place of desperation, it causes you to seek God for help. Brothers and sisters, if we look at this text here on this afternoon, our text here, it comes from the book of Luke. The Bible tells us here in chapter 18 that Luke, he focuses on three themes. The first theme that Luke focuses on is prayer. Secondly, Luke focuses on humanity. And lastly, he focuses on discipleship. We see here in chapter number 18, we see here that Jesus now, he speaks in parables. The Bible tells us here that Jesus says, he says that men ought to always pray and faint not. And say to God, we must come to the understanding real quickly on this afternoon that prayer is very important. Uh, because prayer is what we use to get in contact with Jesus. Prayer is a weapon that we use towards the enemy. And what the devil likes to do, saints of God, is a devil. He likes to make us look at what we're going through and try to convince us to stop praying. While we're going through our trials and while we're going through our circumstances within our lives, the devil, he'll tell you that God doesn't hear your prayer. The devil will tell you that God doesn't hear your situation. He'll tell you that, that God does not see your tears. But saints of God, I want to encourage you here on this afternoon and remind you that the devil is a liar because the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. 
In other words, the prayer of the righteous means so much that that it can break some chains off of somebody's life. The prayer of the righteous means so much that that it can cause somebody to get killed. The prayer of the righteous means so much that that it can cause somebody to be delivered. I don't know what you're going through on this afternoon, child of God, but whatever you do, don't you stop praying because prayer changes some things. If you believe that here in this place, just clap your hands and give God glory. Give him just shout hallelujah. Uh, just shout, just shout hallelujah. Because prayer, it changes uh, some things. So we see here now, brothers and sisters, uh, that after Jesus speaks upon prayer, after he deals with his interactions with the rich ruler, we see here now, uh, at verse 35, that Jesus, he travels from Jerusalem to Jericho. The Bible tells us here that when Jesus gets to Jericho, that, is the, that there's a man that's sitting by the wayside. This man that's sitting by the wayside, the Bible tells us that he's labeled as a blind man. Not only brothers and sisters was this a blind man, but the Bible goes even further and tells us that he also so was a beggar and people of God looking at this man's condition I can imagine people walking past this man like he wasn't there y'all know how people are I can imagine this man sitting by the wayside this man dealing with this condition and people bumping unto him and tell him get out of the way I can imagine people telling him to be quiet nobody's paying attention not only brothers and sisters do I believe that this man was suffering from this physical condition but I also believe that this man was also suffering mentally. I believe that while this man was sitting by the wayside that this man began to question why am I going through this? Why am I in this situation? What did I do to get put in this place? And there might be somebody here under the duration of my voice you might be sitting in the wayside of your situation. You might be sitting by the wayside of your trial. And while you're going through what you're going through, you're starting to question and wonder why am I dealing with this? Lord, why do I have sickness in my body? God, why am I struggling financially? I say to God, I submit to you all this afternoon. Is that no matter what you're going through, you can allow the devil to steal your joy. That's why the Bible declares, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. I know you got sickness in your body, but you still got to keep your joy. Your back's up against the wall, but you still got to keep your joy. You don't know why you're going through what you're going through. But you still got to keep your joy. Because the Bible declares that the joy of the Lord is your strength. With your joy, you can open up your mouth and say, I'm more than a conqueror with your joy. You can lift up your voice in your situation and say, I'm a fighter of fight faith. If you got some joy in this house, I need you to open up your mouth, lift your voice up, and just let the devil hear you. Just say, I got joy, I got power. Then I'm more. I'm more, I'm more than a conqueror. Just lift your voice one more time. And just say, I got joy, I got power. And I'm more, I'm more, I'm more than a conqueror. Going back to the scriptures, the Bible tells us here that while this man was sitting by the wayside, the Bible, the Bible tells us here that he hears a multitude passing by. And after he hears this multitude passing by, the Bible says he asks somebody, he says, what is going on? And the Bible tells us, they tell him, 
they say Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And the Bible tells us as Jesus is making his way. The Bible tells us that the blind man, he cries out with a loud voice. He says, Jesus, thou son of David. He says, have a mercy on me. See, what you must understand, brothers and sisters, is that this blind man, he realized who was the answer to his problem. And saints of God, if you look at the time that we're living in, we're living now in a time and generation where many people are seeking help in the wrong places. They're seeking help to their friends. They're seeking help to the doctors. They're seeking help for their co-workers. But I want to tell you something on this afternoon. Is that your friends can only help you to a certain point. Your doctors can only help you to a certain point. The doctors can only help you to a certain point. But God will put you in a position. But the only one who can help you out is Jesus Christ. That's why even the clicker, he says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From what's come to my help, my help comes from the Lord. That's why David declared, he said, the Lord is my refuge and strength. He says, a very present help in the time of trouble. God will help you out in the trial. He'll help you in your storm. He'll help you in your sickness. If you believe that God will help on this afternoon, just open up your mouth, lift up your voice, and give God a praise and shout hallelujah. Come on, just shout hallelujah. Musicians, hold on, hold on, musicians. If you believe that God is your help, open up your mouth and just lift up your voice and give God the glory of that he is worthy of. So since you know, brothers and sisters, that God is your help, it's time for you to throw away your pride. Because if you look at the time that we're living in, we're living now in a very prideful generation. You have individuals that come to church Sunday after Sunday. They come to Bible class Wednesday after Wednesday. They come to church Friday after Friday. But not one time will they open up their mouth and say, Lord, I need you. Not one time will they open up their mouth and say, Lord, I need your touch. I want to tell somebody here on this afternoon that God does not move in pride. Because the Bible tells us that pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before fall. But when you come inside the house of God, you got to learn how to open up your mouth and say, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. That's standing in the need of prayer. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I'm not ashamed about opening up my mouth and telling the Lord that I need Him. I'm not ashamed to open up my mouth and say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your touch. Lord, I need your deliverance. If not, if you're not ashamed to open up your mouth. Just lift up your voice right now and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need your touch. Lord, I need your deliverance. Lord, I need your help. Come on, somebody. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Musicians, open up your mouth. And lift your voice up and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need your touch. Lord, I need your deliverance. Going back to the scriptures, the Bible says here now, in verse number 35, that after this blind man cried out to Jesus, the Bible tells us here now that the people, they began to rebuke him. But what I love about the blind man is when they told him to 
shut up. The Bible says he cried out even more. And what you gotta know here, seeds of God, is the devil's objective is to cause you to come to the house of God and sit there and shut up. The devil wants you to come inside of the house of God and sit there with your arms folded and sit there with your mouth turned up and not say nothing. But I come out here to let you know that no matter what you're going through, you can stop praising God. That's why David declared that I will bless the Lord at all times. And this praises shall continually be in my mouth. You've got sickness in your body, but you still got to praise him. Your back's up against the wall, but you still got to praise him. You can see your way out, but you still got to praise him. The devil doesn't want you to call on that name. I got a question for you. What's his name? His name is Jesus. I need everybody to open up your mouth and lift your voice up and call that name. What's his name? Jesus. 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 Come on, open your mouth right now. Everybody in this house, open up your mouth. Call that name. Have that name in the shall lie. Have that name in tongue shall confess. Open up your mouth and call that name. What's his name, saints of God? His name is Jesus. The lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. Have that name. And the Bible says that after he called that name, that Jesus looked at him and said, Receive thy sight. He said, Thy faith have received thee. And my assignment is to tell somebody at the shepherd's place is that your faith can bring you out. Your faith bring you out of the trial. Your faith can bring you out of the storm. Your faith can cause you to be healed. So if you've got faith, open up your mouth and get Jesus' attention. To me, oh Lord, set me in the prayer. Open up your mouth and call his name and complete faith. Jesus, help me out. Jesus, touch my mouth. Open up your mouth and call that name. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Wondering why, God, am I dealing with this sickness in my body? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
God tell me to tell you on this afternoon that he sees you. He hears your cry. But you gotta call his name in faith. And you gotta get his attention. Shabbat. Understand everywhere that Jesus went, a multitude followed him. Not only was Jesus a preacher, not only was a teacher, but he was, as we all know, was a rabbi. He was a healer. He was a deliverer. People always were thrown against him. But you got to understand that if you called his name in faith, his attention shifted. You think about the woman with the issue of blood. She was desperate in her situation. But she made up in my mind, if I just touch the king of us garment, I shall be made whole. You might be desperate, but in the midst of your desperation, you got to hold on to your faith. You look at the man that was sick with the palsy. The Bible says that when Jesus was in Capernaum, while he was preaching the gospel in the house, the Bible tells us that there was no room. The room was filled up. But the man was so desperate for a breakthrough and a miracle. They brought him up to the top of the roof. They began to rip the roof off. They brought him down and because of his faith, he was healed. You look at Brother Jacob in the book of Genesis. Jacob was in a desperate situation. But Jacob wrestled with the angel and Jesus told him, let me go. Hey. And the Bible tells us, what, what, what did Jacob say? I won't let go until what? You bless me. My question for you all this afternoon is, are you willing to fight for me? God operates in desperation. But you got to make sure that you keep the faith. I'm here to extend the altar call on this morning. Here's the one.